Hi everyone, uh, my name is Steve Gaynor and I am the Community Coordinator for SocialBizUG.org and I have the distinct pleasure today of having Mr. Jim Clausen with us uh, for my SocialBizUG.org Member of the Month. Jim, how are you doing? I'm doing great, Steve. Thanks for uh, having me. It's great to be with you. And I'm, I'm really glad to have you with us. Um, and uh, we were chatting before this. Uh, I believe you said uh, you're in Silicon Valley. Yeah, yeah, I'm out here uh, on the West Coast in California in the uh, Silicon Valley area. I'm very envious of that. It <laughs> snowed this morning. I heard that. Yeah, I was just talking with someone about that. So, uh, yeah, it's a. Uh, well, I don't want to tell you about how the weather is today. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, all right. So, Jim, um, uh, if you can, can you tell me uh, who do you work for and what do you do? So, uh, so I work with IBM. I'm in the social business category, and I work with uh, around IBM's collaboration solutions and technologies. And what I do is, uh, while my focus is really around digital engagement coaching and so helping um, you know people and organizations grow into social businesses and become social businesses and helping them really first with you know the why you know why is this important and kind of the uh, guiding you know principles how to think about this the mindset and then, you know, of course, like you've probably seen on, you know, like the Ask Jim podcast and things like that. Then we get down into, you know, kind of the mechanics on how to do things. But, um, yeah, so that, that's uh, my focus. I, uh, I really agree the, uh, with your, the, the why part. Yeah. Uh, I often find um, with upper management, um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, they right. will often forget to ask why. Why do you want to do what you're doing? Right. Yeah. yeah. What's the value? What's the really? What's the end goal? So. Right. Uh, so, um, what got you started in connections? <laughs> so, what got me started was I was in a management role. I had a, a team of about ten direct reports, and then I was managing basically responsible for six hundred people around the world. I'm trying to get everybody on the same page. So. Uh, and that time it was industry solutions, so it was around you know getting everyone aligned on planning, strategy, uh, and just operations. Uh, you know everyone is using their own systems in their own country on their own hard drives and so forth. And um, going into this role, I quickly discovered that uh, there aren't enough airplanes you can get on, there aren't enough phone calls you can do. Right to align so many people, and so uh, at that time we were just rolling out IBM connections in IBM internally, and so uh, at that point I didn't know much about it, and so I started using it, and literally within 15 minutes I had my first aha moment, and thought, you know, this is the path forward, and uh, I went from honestly feelings of complete uh, anxiety to, you know, feelings of, of really excitement because I thought, like, yeah, we can really align 600 people using connections. And so from then on, I became, you know, really a really passionate advocate and, you know, was so successful in that role, helping people that um, I felt like uh, I really want to focus my attention on helping other organizations and teams and people you know, people kept coming to me for questions, you know, gee, Jim, how are you doing that with that group and so forth. So that, that was kind of the beginning of my journey. And since then, of course, I've, you know, shifted to focus purely on collaboration solutions and helping and coaching uh, and trying to teach others. So I, I can certainly understand uh, your excitement on it. A, a couple of years ago, I went to a, uh, a one-day seminar with uh, Chris Crummy. Uh, uh -huh. and that... I, I left that just going, oh, give me connections, give me, give me. Give me. <laughs> yeah, you know, he gets so. you excited, doesn't he? <laughs> All right, so yeah, um, this is great. Uh, let me ask then, um, um, 
What do you see uh, uh, as the biggest challenges that you see with organizations in using connections? You know, Steve, I think the hardest thing is, uh, you know, it's not using, you know, the mechanics, you know, of the platform. Um, it's really adoption. And in teams, uh, for many organizations, you know, it's new. Working social, uh, out loud, transparent, um, you know, in this kind of open collaborative environment is new for a lot of people. And I think the hardest thing is making that shift from working alone on your hard drive, on your computer, living in your inbox, <laughs> to working, you know, uh, you know, shifting to more of this co-creation, you know, open collaboration uh, kinds of approaches where everything's not locally on your hard drive, you know, on your but in a connections environment. And, you know, that can be a you know, that shift can be a challenge for people, and I think that adoption journey, uh, you know, I think is the biggest challenge I see. So that that's kind of where I try and, you know, focus my attention and helping people make that journey. And, uh, you know, the reality is, uh, at least what I find is it doesn't happen overnight, right? And, that, you know, it's a journey, and that's made up of many small steps. You know, I that's... It, I find that very interesting that you say that. Um, uh, I guess because of what I do, I'm used to working with files and such remotely. But that's right. very interesting. I, I mean, I can see that a lot of people would have trouble with that. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's, I don't know. Yeah, well, you and I might think like, well, sure. How else would you do it now? Right. Um, but, uh, you know, for people who aren't used to that, maybe at the beginning of the journey, that can be overwhelming or foreign you know it just depends on the person but uh, yeah you know, but I think that adoption and getting whole organizations you know so working in in a collaboration environment like connections um, is not is a team effort you know the more people participate and collaborate the more value everyone gets it's not a solo activity right so with any organization, uh, especially the bigger the organization, um, it's important that everyone, you know, participates and collaborates, and that way everyone can benefit. Um, you know, and the other uh, real challenge I see uh, is, you know, with management and senior leadership. You know, I think in a lot of organizations, uh, what I see is maybe a slower rate of adoption, and oftentimes people know follow their management and you know follow their lead and I think people can lead more effectively uh, using IBM you know connections to uh, you know share guidance uh, direction strategy and make you know um, sharing these things in a very open manner so it's more about di you know a dialogue and a discussion um, rather than kind of pushing uh, management guidance. So, it, you know, it changes the whole dynamic uh, with the team, and I think it's so powerful. But um, I, I see that being kind of a challenge across yeah. many organizations. No, I, I, I can see that. Um, uh, and like you said, you know, you and I, because of our jobs, it, it does seem like, yeah. well, of course that's what you would do. But, I, right. you know, I can see it being a challenge for others. Yeah. All right, now... Uh, on the Social Biz site, you have a truly awesome blog, uh, the, or the Ask Jim podcast. And by the way, to all of our community members, <laughs> if you haven't checked it out, uh, if you have absolutely anything to do with connections, I heartily recommend it. So oh, I was perusing you. your blog the other day, and I came across episode 26, kind of like uh -huh. Star Wars. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, and where you, you talk about how to use email uh, and when to, I'm sorry, you talk about when to use email and when to use connections. Uh, right. Can you give me an overview of that particular uh, podcast? Uh, what are the pros and cons of email versus connections? Yeah, so it's uh, funny you mentioned that. So actually, uh, one minor point of trivia, they just wrapped shooting on the next Star Wars movie, number eight. Which I'm looking forward to comes out in a year, <laughs> but 
so that's a great episode. And that is actually one of the most popular. I think it is still ranked number one out of 110 episodes. That is ranked number one as the most popular uh, episode by number of listens. So um, I, I don't know. I kind of try and simplify it for people and, and, you know, really make it as simple as possible in terms of guidance. So the way I look at it is mail or email is great for, you know, one-to-one communication. And when you have, uh, you need to communicate about something that's, you know, restricted or confidential, right? It's something you want to do, you know, directly one-on-one with a person. And it's sensitive information that you might not want to share openly on, on a platform like Connections. Or as a trigger, you know, so using email as a trigger to content in uh, connections, like a, a blog post or an update to an activity, for example. So I, really, I think... I'm sorry, I don't mean to interrupt. Can, can you define what you mean by a trigger a little bit more, please? Uh, so using the alerts. So, for example, if you're uh, a leader on a team and you post a new blog post on uh, reflecting on a performance from last quarter, for example, um, you could then send an alert to members of the team for that blog post in IBM Connections. And what it does is it sends an alert. I think of it as a trigger. Sorry, that's my terminology. Right. Uh, it sends an alert you know, to their inbox. Hey, you know, your manager, you know, so-and-so has, you know, has posted a blog post and you can go here to you know, read about it or you know, participate, comment, uh, and have a you know, part of the discussion. So, so that's really how I think of it as a trigger, as notifying someone to pull them into a connections community or somewhere in the you know, connections environment. Gotcha. So, All right. I'm, I didn't mean to interrupt. Please continue. Yeah, yeah. So those are the three, th- three things for email. You know, one-to-one private communication, if it's really confidential or restricted you know, information, it's sensitive, or to use as an alert. And really connections, I recommend, you know, people shift their communication and interaction over to connections for things like group collaboration, you know, brainstorming and discussion and group information sharing. So rather than, for example, sending out an email blast with some information, uh, do maybe a blog post and you know, so you're sharing information to the group, but it becomes again more of an interactive, you know, uh, you know, team discussion and dialogue. And you know, what I talked about earlier, things like uh, leadership guidance, <clears throat> I think is very powerful for people in organizations, enterprises, to small businesses, um, to be able to share key information with their, you know, their workforce, or you know, it could be if it's an external connections environment with their partners, their vendors, their suppliers. Um, you know, that's such a great environment to share information, but because it's in a, a place where people can collaborate and interact, it becomes a two-way communication. So you can get feedback um, and, you know, iterate those ideas and concepts forward. So really that's, you know, kind of how I break it down. Uh, between email and connections, um, you know, hopefully that helps people. Uh, and, and and again, for all our members out there, um, uh, I, I do recommend uh, the uh, Ask Jim podcast, uh, and you can uh, hear this kind of stuff in depth and get all sorts of tips and tricks, <laughs> uh, which is really awesome. Yeah. All thank right, you. Jim, we're running out of time, so we are at the moment where I have the most important question of the interview. Now, if people have listened to these before, you know that's usually what's your favorite movie. But I've decided to change this one up just a little bit. Um, If you're reading good books lately, (laughs) uh, can you recommend a a book either um, uh, related to business or just for fun that you uh, may have read lately? Yeah, yeah. So... um... No, it's it's a great great topic. So I don't know what are they. I, I think there's three great books that I've read recently, and one uh, I'd highly recommend to people is uh, 
book called Essentialism from a gentleman called Greg, um, named Greg McEwen. And it's basically focusing on, you know, what matters. You can think of it as, you know, productivity, but it's really about rethinking what your prioritizations and focus in life. And I found it just immensely helpful. Um, and the other great book, much related to what we've talked about today, is a book called Super Connect by uh, Greg Lockwood and Richard Koch. And it's really talking about the dynamics of networks. I think um, I think it would really help people, you know, expand their thinking uh, around the importance of networks in an environment like, you know, connections, and the importance of those weak links. So your secondary and tertiary networks. Uh, that's a great a great book. Um, and the other one I think really relates to what we've been talking about in collaborating and working open in a an environment like Connections is a book called Give and Take by Adam Grant. And basically the importance of, you know, the mindset of helping and serving and giving away knowledge uh, to help others. So those are three three books I'd really recommend, you know, people take a look at. They all sound like really excellent books. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they're good. They're good. Um, all right. Uh, as I said, I think we're out of time. Uh, Jim, I do so appreciate you taking the time to speak with me today. Uh, and everyone out there in social biz land, please be sure and check out the Ask Jim podcast on the site. And I will talk to everyone soon. Goodbye. All right. Thanks a lot, Steve. Take care.